Welcome, welcome, welcome to DBO TV. This is episode six, which I'm going to call Guns, Guns, Guns. Uh, my name is Duncan, and uh, let's get things started, shall we? Let's go. Alright, I'm glad you stuck around after that awesome credit sequence. <laughs> uh, this is uh, DBO TV, and my name is NCSU Duncan, your host as always, every week, broadcasting live on Twitch, unless of course you're watching the YouTube archive, in which case you really should come watch the show live, it's a lot of fun, uh, people really seem to enjoy the live chat. Uh, but anyway, this is of course DBO TV, the official... I say official as if it means anything, but uh, official uh, news broadcast of destiny.bungie.org, which is my favorite Destiny fan site, hopefully yours as well. I don't know. Unless you have your own Destiny fan site. <laughs> but anyway, got a fairly quick show for you, uh, kind of similar to last week's. I don't have a guest lined up again, uh, but there's a lot to talk about. And uh, this one was kind of put together at the last minute because I spent most of uh, my normal preparation time listening to the Bungie podcast. Uh, but I'll dig into that a little bit later. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the Destiny drawing board that came out last week. Um, I've actually been really happy with how often uh, this feature has been uh, popping up on, on the Bungie blog. When it when Destiny drawing board, you know, first became a thing, I thought it would be, you know, like maybe once a month, uh, just sort of considering the, the previous cadence of Destiny news. But it's been really nice to get uh, new stuff every week. And this week, we got to see uh, a closer look at the Thunderlord, which you probably recognize from the E3 and Gamescom demos. It's, uh, it's the epic loot that uh, uh, the player one picks up after defeating Rixus the Archon Slayer. Uh, but even though we've seen it before, it was really nice to get a, a deeper look into this. Um, Thunderlord looks like a pretty badass weapon. It's is exotic. Uh, and uh, Tom Doyle, the art lead, who's sort of been, you know, the go-to quote man for all of these Destiny drawing boards, says that at any moment this gun should feel like it might blow up in your hands. Uh, so it's a little, a little intimidating, a little dangerous. I really like this uh, sort of cutaway view, showing you some of the internal components of the Thunderlord. You know, the the battery pack fuel cell. It got some sweet power cables on the side. Uh, definitely looks like a high-tech gun, you know, not just not just gunpowder going on there, um, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, another quote, uh, again from Tom Doyle. He says the ammunition is some kind of monster that they normally wouldn't use. Uh, the use of electrostatic rounds over this amplitude has been prohibited due to their volatility. Uh, so again, sort of hyping up, you know, the 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 massive damage this this gun is gonna put out. It's a pretty cool render there. Uh, I like the like the blue. Blue's not my favorite color, but it looks pretty good on this gun. Uh, here we've got, you know, the first person view and you can sort of see some of the the sweet uh, sort of particle electric effects going on uh, that were sort of added kind of late. Um, but here Deej says that the Thunderlord is so dangerous a weapon that it poses an equal threat to the Guardian behind it as it does to the enemies that appear downrange. Now, I've seen some uh, community members sort of speculating on that, wondering, you know, is, is the, the Thunderlord going to damage you as well? Is, like, is that actually going to be a gameplay component to it? Um, 
Uh, my guess is probably not. It's probably just some, you know, nice prose that Deej, Deej is putting together. But hey, you never know. Maybe if you, uh, if you, instead of just your normal overheating mechanic, this will like have some sort of dam, you know, component that damages you if you're firing for for too long. Um, but anyway, I think that covers uh, that. Again, trying to move pretty quickly here. Uh, we also had a, a awesome uh, mail sack. Uh, this week, so let's uh, let's dive into that real quick. All right, this week's mail sack was actually really entertaining read. Uh, there was a lot of uh, interesting thoughts, uh, a lot of uh, the the funny little stories from Bungie. Um, you know, just just a, another peek into life at uh, the uh, the Bellevue Studio there. Uh, but Deej started off with this really epic paragraph, just sort of summarizing all of the things they accomplished uh, in the in just the recent weeks. Uh, so I want to dig into that. Um, let's see. He he started off saying, you know, we we know how many weeks remain between you and your fate. For now, that's just one more secret for us to keep. Uh, and this is actually really exciting. Uh, it it sounds like uh, Bungie has picked a release date for Destiny. Like they actually have, you know, probably somewhere up on the wall a, a countdown clock uh, to. He, he, he doesn't say days remain, he says weeks, so it might not be a specific day yet, but it is interesting to see that they're, they're already willing to admit that they've got, you know, this, this, this week picked out uh, to release the game. So it makes me, makes me hopeful that, you know, we'll get that date uh, sometime soon. Um, but anyway, so Deej, Deej continues describing, you know, this, this week at Bungie and the, their accomplishments. Uh, by saying, you know, we can now run the entire game from start to finish on dev kits. Uh, he says, we saw a full feature set for the ways you'll interact with Destiny when you're on the go. And uh, he also says, the audio team got an order for sound effects that more than tripled your original arsenal of explosives. Uh, and I, I'm assuming he's he's comparing that to um, uh, uh, a Halo game, like in terms of how, how many sound effects they're putting into this. Uh, so like three times three three times the number of weapon sound effects. That's that's a lot of guns. Um, but I, I I do think it's exciting that you know they can run through the entire game from start to finish. Um, at one point, did they stop calling uh, Destiny an alpha and start calling it a beta? I mean, if you can if you can play the game from start to finish, that's sounding like I don't know. It depends on your definition of alpha and beta. Uh, but it's, it's pretty cool that you know this starting to see the entire package come together. Um, Deej also mentioned the the mobile app, you know, full feature set for the ways you'll interact with Destiny when you're on the go. Uh, that, that I'm assuming he's talking about the mobile app there and all the ways that ties into the game, uh, whatever that is, because I'm sure it's more than just stats. You know, um, really really curious to see how that works and if it works on iOS 7. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so Deej continues this paragraph. Like I said, it was, it was very meaty. There was a lot of information here, uh, a lot of little teases. Uh, he continues saying, uh, we passed out a whole raft of next-gen dev kits to the people who needed them the most. Um, that's that's, uh, that's kind of cool. They're handing out PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones, uh, I suppose. I, I'm guessing they probably didn't hand out any Wii U's, but <laughs> you never know. Uh, Deej also says, one of our raids in an undisclosed location turned a corner and is now fully functional. Um, we still aren't quite sure what raids are yet, uh, but it sounds, I mean, it sounds like something out of uh, an, another MMORPG, you know, some sort of group instance kind of thing. Um, so it's kind of, it's nice to hear that one of those is now fully functional, I guess. Uh, and then, of course, Deej says, we poured the foundation for a new wing on Bungie.net that we will use to extend tokens of our gratitude to the Vanguard. Um, my guess as to the meaning of that is uh, 
is that you know they've they've implemented some sort of Bungie.net feature that'll it's kind of like recon you know that'll give the the early fans the people that are participating on the forums and private groups now some sort of item or something in Destiny uh, that might even harken back to the uh, the cards the trading cards they were giving out at Gamescom they have a really uh, a weird code on the back redeemable for something. But you know, there's there's no system in place to to redeem those codes yet. So maybe that's what Deej is talking about, uh, adding this new wing to Bungie.net. Uh, but anyway, he he finishes that paragraph by saying the Vex learned a f few new tricks. Um, so it's always always nice to hear uh, new tricks being added to the game. Uh, I've always enjoyed uh, the AI in Bungie games. So knowing that the Vex are learning some some new tricks. Uh, maybe they're not old dogs after all. Um, but anyway, there weren't a lot of, uh, other than that, that starting paragraph, there weren't a lot of uh, questions that revealed much about Destiny. Uh, like I said, this, this mail sack was pretty entertaining uh, and a good read uh, in terms of just, you know, hearing from Bungie staffers and, and learning about life at the studio. But there, there wasn't a ton of uh, raw information. Uh, but there are, uh, I think, two questions that, that I thought were interesting. The first one was uh, from Blurg, I guess. Uh, when was the first time someone stole your loot from a huge boss that you took a few tries to kill? Uh, and uh, this isn't new to us, but Deej's answer was, uh, you know, if you're asking about Destiny, the, the answer is, n is never. Uh, as we've known for a while now, Destiny has a, a private loot stream, uh, so nobody's going to be stealing your uh, st stealing your items after an epic boss battle. Uh, but anyway, so not a lot of information there, but it's always nice to to hear confirmation that you know the a reminder about the this private loot stream system. Uh, this was a lot more interesting to me. Chris D, uh, who's a Facebook fan of Bungie, I suppose, asked, "What's the design process for the gorgeous backdrops in the game?" And Deej says, that's a great question that would lead to a great conversation. Uh, we've been exploring the creative process in our weapon foundry through the stories and insights from people like Tom Doyle. The locations in our game deserve the same treatment. If you're curious in that way, you're welcome to look forward to a new feature on the Bungie blog. And uh, he sort of teases us a little bit by saying, do you know the three most important rules for real estate? Location, location, location. And of course he's got that that concept art of uh, the sand buried city, presumably on Mars. Um, so this this makes me think that we're going to see uh, either Destiny drawing board uh, that focuses on locations, or maybe it'll it'll be an entirely new feature, uh, sort of where Destiny drawing board is weapons. We'll see some you know uh, some sort of uh, tourism guide on on the different locations of Destiny. Uh, so that's pretty exciting because you know it's it's really nice hearing about new weapons every week, but you know I'm I'm curious about other aspects of the game, you know locations, vehicles, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm looking forward looking forward to that whenever that starts popping up. Um, Deej wraps up the mail sack with probably the best mail sack to me, uh, and that is uh, the mail sack may soon be forced to yield to more official more traditional weekly communiques from Bungie. Not yet, but soon. So it sounds like, uh, you know, this week at least, you know, we're, we're getting another mail sack. In fact, Deej just posted the, uh, the questions thread about an hour ago. Um, but, you know, maybe as early as next week we could be getting the return of the Bungie weekly updates. Uh, it's been quite a while since, you know, we regularly got uh, uh, Bungie weekly updates, uh, you know, at least two two years, two and a half years. Um, so I'm really excited for those to come back um, because they're they're definitely different than the mail sacks. I mean, the mail sacks, they just sort of somewhat constrained by what questions people are asking. You know, we might not necessarily be asking the right questions, uh, but it's also the mail the mail sacks seem to the Bungie Weekly Update seems to be a, a much more uh, bountiful source of actual news, like concept art, and, uh, and another really 
really good announcements instead of just, you know, a, it's got a little bit of that life inside the studio angle to it, but a lot more of a steady drop uh, of info. So I'm I'm definitely excited to, to see that come back. But anyway, speaking of returning features, uh, today the Bungie podcast came back after two years and nine months of silence. Uh, we finally get to to hear a, another conversation from uh, from the guys at Bungie, and this is uh, this is Deej's first podcast, but definitely not Irks. Um, so it was it was a pretty great listen. Uh, I don't want to spoil the whole thing because it's it's only uh, 60 minutes long, I believe. Um, so you should definitely listen to it yourself because it's it's very entertaining. Um, there's there's lots of good information. Uh, they talk about you know guns, guns, guns. You know, the the weapons of destiny, uh, and and sort of how they work, uh, especially the the three weapon system. There's a lot of information about that. But anyway, this this uh, this podcast episode. You know, we've got uh, David, Eric, and John. Who you might know as Deej, Irk, and Hausalan. And they are joined by Tom Doyle, who's the art lead, uh, who's been giving us all those great quotes from the Destiny drawing board, as well as Josh Hamrick, which you know is just a pretty awesome guy. Uh, you know, I, I follow him on Twitter, and he's always got really funny things to say. Uh, but anyway, so Tom and Josh sort of get put in the hot seat and get grilled by the other three guys on you know uh, designing these weapons. Uh, from, from both an aesthetic standpoint and a gameplay standpoint, and uh, it's it's really pretty interesting. Um, one thing I, I wanted to mention, hold on, let's see, uh, it's just a pick of their podcasting equipment. One thing I wanted to mention was Tom Doyle uh, brings up uh, a weapon, hold on, Tom Doyle mentions a weapon uh, that he's not sure if, you know, the concept art is out for it or not, and I'm pretty sure I found it. It's this one in the top left, and I believe the name of it... Hold on, I lost it. Do, do, do. The name of this weapon is... The Last Word, that was it. The Last Word, right. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's the this revolver in the top left that seems to match uh, Tom's description the most. It could be the one next to it to the right, uh, which looks like the same exact gun just with an extra barrel and like a some sort of clip <laughs> belt clip on the bottom there um, but anyway uh, definitely give the podcast a listen uh, they also talk about um, Thorn briefly and they mention a gun called uh, ha the Hard Light Hard Light uh, which I don't know if we've seen before um, but anyway, they, they talk about a bunch of different guns. They, they go into uh, a lot of detail about how the three weapons system works and, um, and how that sort of compares to Halo games previously. Uh, because you'll be able to carry around more than three weapons, but Josh Hamrick uh, talks a lot about how he's sort of got these secret ways that he's implementing uh, to keep you from just sitting at your inventory screen halfway through a match and swapping out to whatever weapon you want. But the nice thing is that ammunition for these weapons, you know, it's uh, it's not going to be, you know, hundreds of different kinds of ammunition littering the, the battlefield, or even as many different types as you see in Halo games, even though, you know, there's only, you know, a couple dozen weapons there. Um, uh, Josh Hamrick seems to imply that there's only going to be three types of ammo, and uh, the, the heavy weapon ammo might be something that promotes map flow, that you would have you would expect from a Halo match, um, because once they sort of take away power weapons on the map, you know what's going to encourage people to move around and uh, try to control different areas. Uh, so I think that's a really smart way to do it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out, uh, but you know, sounds sounds pretty cool. But anyway, so that sort of I don't like I said I don't want to talk about you know all of the podcast one because I don't want to spoil it for you. And two, because I barely had enough time to listen to it before I had to start throwing all this stuff together. <laughs> so maybe maybe I'll re revisit it next week when I have more of a chance to sort of uh, pull together some thoughts and quotes. Because uh, like I said, I, I didn't have enough time to, to listen through it a second time and uh, type, out, type out a bunch of quotes. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, moving on to more community oriented things. Uh, if if you recall from you know previous episodes of DBO TV, uh, I've always brought up uh, Karen Olava, who is a cosplayer who is building you know she's building this this awesome hunter costume, but she's also building Gallerhorn, and uh, she put the finishing touches on it uh, just recently and posted the results to Twitter and. Uh, I think uh, uh, the word flabbergasted came up on the DBO front page, and that's a very good, uh, very good descriptor for for how I felt when I saw this. Uh, this gun just looks amazing, um, and I, I can't wait to see you know how the whole costume comes together uh, and how it looks you know in somebody's hand. But you can really see the uh, the attention to detail in some of these shots. Um, I mean. It, it, you know the the little wolf sculptures are are just very sharp looking <laughs> very they look like they're actually made of you know sort of some sort of brass or something even though i remember seeing the the pictures of the the sort of sculpy m material coming out of the oven uh, but anyway uh so yeah so props to uh karen on that um let's see i guess it's time for a uh, tip of the hat for this week and I just realized that I don't have a hat handy. Hold on. Let me let me let me grab one real quick. There we go. Yeah, that's better. All right. Tip of the hat. Got this nice little weird small top hat. I don't even know where I got this thing. So I think somebody left it at my house once a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, tip of the hat this week goes to the wonderful folks at Destiny Dispatch and my name is Bife over at Inside Destiny. Uh, now if you follow any of these guys on Twitter uh, or Bungie, uh, you, you probably saw yesterday when they put out a, a community thank you video. Uh, and this was sort of in response to Bungie's uh, thank you video to the community uh, and the, the the guys and gals at Destiny Dispatch and Inside Destiny thought that they would thank Bungie back and they they sort of coordinated a bunch of different community members making you know this really uh, heartfelt a little cheesy but but really endearing video um, thanking Bungie for for making the summer awesome with all with all this Destiny news so sort of off tip of the hat to uh, Destiny Dispatch and Inside Destiny uh, for that. So, all right, let me take this thing off. Uh, speaking of other communities, uh, I had the pleasure of appearing on Guardian Radio uh, over with the Guardians of Destiny. Uh, this was last night. Uh, they streamed their pro podcast live on Twitch. Uh, who does? Who streams to Twitch? Honestly. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun, you know, hanging out with uh, Mark, Derek, uh, Watts, Craig, and Chris. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. <laughs> uh, but it was it was a lot of fun uh, appearing on that and talking to the guys about Destiny. We speculated about the podcast a little bit, uh, so you can go back and see if we were right or not. Uh, but you should definitely go check out their site and uh, give that a download. Unless, of course, you actually you know, hate my voice. I'm not listening to the podcast because I was there and I'll just get frustrated if I listen to it. But uh, you should definitely uh, definitely go check that out and follow them on Twitter. They are at Guardians of D. Um, so anyway, so like I said, uh, I wanted to make this a pretty quick episode. Uh, I was sort of rushed throwing it together. Um, so this is also rushed as well. I want to I wanna do this better uh, next week. But I at least wanted to mention it. Uh, Joseph Staten uh, just announced on the Bungie blog that he is uh, leaving Bungie to go uh, pursue some other creative endeavors uh, somewhere. Uh, and he's been there for 15 years. He's one of the, like the core Bungie guys, at least in my book. Um, and so it's uh, it's kind of sad to see him go. But you know, I, I really want to see where he ends up, uh, what sort of projects he uh, ends up working on. Um, Joe's, Joe's a really cool guy. I remember meeting him, uh, at Halo Fest a long time ago, long time, a couple years ago. Um, and of course I ran into him at E3, uh, this year. He's just a really awesome guy. Uh, it sort of sucks that he's leaving Bungie, but 
you know, sometimes that, that kind of stuff uh, ha has to happen. You want to move on to other projects and uh, see what happens there. So, uh, anyway, uh, that about wraps it up for this week. Uh, as always, I would absolutely love your feedback uh, over on destiny.bungie.org slash forum. Uh, I started a thread there uh, just about an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Uh, so leave, leave some feedback there. Let me know if you like you know, this faster, uh, faster setup. Uh, I'd want to bring back the interviews, but it's, that takes a little bit of coordination. Um, but those, those aren't gone for good. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you're watching on Twitch, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash destinybungieorg. And if you're watching on YouTube, you should definitely come check out the, the Twitch channel and try to watch the show live. Uh, the, uh, the chat is always, always a delight. Uh, I, I really enjoy reading through that. Uh, anyway... Uh, we also have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash destinybungie.org, and we also have Twitter accounts. Uh, DBO Tweets is the main site Twitter account, and of course, NCSU Duncan is me, um, you know, just in case you, you forgot. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks for watching this week. Um, let me know, send me, uh, send me a message uh, again on the forum. Uh, if you have any suggestions for, for content you'd like to see, uh, or if you have any questions about Destiny that you want me to try and uh, give you my opinion on. I can't give you any answers, of course, but you know I'm always looking for new topics to talk about. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you next week. There we go. Fix that.